I'm Sarah, and I'm from Indie Games, and I am back playing Seduce Me once more. And I left it on not really that big of a cliffhanger last time. Alright. Soon, the other Incubi appeared in the lobby with us. This situation was not getting pretty. I had to think fast. Oh no! What, they're not gonna fall for either of those top two? So, I have to say they're visitors. Because obviously they're not in their head. They're my friends. They're gonna understand. Then why did one of them open the door? Because they're respectful visitors? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Well, excuse me. Um, it was no use. There was no time to lie to them. I felt helpless. Don't lie! Then I felt a hand on my shoulder and felt the tension in my body almost fade away. I turned to see James smile at me before stepping in front of me. We must apologize, ladies. We know this situation must be confusing for everyone. Let's take this to the dining room and we'll explain everything. I stared at James wide-eyed. Was he going to tell them who they were? Everything seemed surreal. Before I knew it, I was led to the dining room along with Suzu and Naomi and sat across from their confused gazes. As Naomi and Suzu sat down, Eric and Matthew placed their untouched plates of food in front of them, surprising their guests. Whoa, this looks amazing! Thank you! Our pleasure, ladies. We hope you enjoy your meals. Make sure you dig in! I looked at Naomi and Suzu as they began to eat, visibly enjoying every bite they placed in their mouth. Hopefully the food would ease their minds for whatever James wanted to reveal. As Naomi and Suzu ate their impromptu meals, James and the other boys stood behind my chair, making me grow more red in the face. So, Anderson, are you gonna tell us what's going on? Well, you see, uh... Gently, James placed a hand on my shoulder again, signaling me to just eat my food. As I began to eat, he spoke to Naomi and Suzu. We are Miss Anderson's house servants. We were hired by her late grandfather to help around the mansion, but since he has passed, we now assist Miss Anderson with living on her own. Butler harem! <laughs> that makes sense. It's such a huge house. Really? They fall for that? A huge house for a wonderful princess such as Miss Anderson deserves the greatest of servants to care for it. But why are you all dressed so casually and stuff? Aren't servants supposed to have uniforms or whatever? Well, Miss Anderson allows us to get comfy while we work, so she lets us wear casual clothes. Good job, Matthew. Yeah, something like that. We're sorry if we made this situation awkward earlier. We're very sure that Miss Anderson is also still getting used to having us as her servants. It would be very hard to explain after just a day. I guess. So, if I may ask, what brings you two ladies here? Well, we wanted to see how our friend was doing. Since it's the weekend and all, usually we hang out and just chill. Yeah, like going to the arcade and stuff. Or the Pink Lady Cafe. There's an arcade? <clears throat> That makes a lot of sense, ladies. <laughs> well, we don't wish to disturb you any further than we have, so we'll take our leave and start preparing the house. Huh? Preparing for what? We gotta prep the house for some sort of housewarming party thing. Our princess's parents requested a housewarming party to be held here soon. And by soon, they mean tonight. Oh, well, I guess we can help out or something. Right, Naomi? I thought you wanted to go to the arcade. This housewarming thing is more important. No need. We can handle it. If you'd like to, miss, you can go out with your friends while we handle things here. Seriously? Sam, not now. Well, I... I wanted to help out, but at the same time I wanted to go out with my friends. James gave me a look of understanding, letting me know that if I left, everything would be okay. I had to make a decision. Oh, man... Like, I don't know, honestly. You know, like, girls day out, but I, I don't know, honestly. I would stay and help. I mean, like, honestly, I would insist, like, me as a person, I would be like, no, we should really stay and help. 
not gonna just like leave, you know? It does kind of go with the butler thing though. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I think I'm gonna stay. I think I'm gonna stay. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> I'm sure. Besides, it is my housewarming party. I should help out too. See, that's the thought I had. Want us to help out as well? Mm-hmm. I think we've got it all taken care of. Thanks though, girls. All right, we'll head on out then so we're not in the way. Sorry guys, I'll hang out with you guys soon. It's all good, Anderson. We'll definitely come to the housewarming party tonight. Thank you. I think this is best. I led them back into the lobby and walked them to the doors, opening it for them with a thankful smile. They both gave me hugs before walking out to Naomi's car, which was parked in the driveway. And with that, they left. I was happy that they wanted to help, but I had to do this on my own. It was not their work, so I didn't want to force it on them just because they were my best friends. We had the entire day to work. The party was tonight, so we had to do all we could to make everything right. We sat down and talked about what needed to happen before the party started that night. Each guy had been assigned a different part of the party to do, and right after lunch, we began to work. Since everything was taken care of by at least one incubus, James told me I could assist one of them. The question was who? Oh no! Oh no! Okay, Matthew's cooking, James is gardening. Damien's in the lobby, what is he doing in the lobby? Eric with the dining room, no, don't make me choose. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm gonna be obvious, um, honest. I mean, like, I've kind of already decided I'm gonna go after somebody because I can't play these kinds of games without doing that. And I'm stuck between Sam and Damien. Like, I like Damien, but the mind reading thing kind of creeps me out. And I, I liked James at first, but he's kind of obnoxious with how much he flirts. Um, oh man, I kind of want to go with Sam. I don't know why. I feel like it's going to be, like, punishing, like, because he's kind of a brat. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to go hang out with Sam. I walked out to the front yard to see Sam not cleaning, but doing slow motions with his hands and arm. He was doing Tai Chi, a form of martial arts I had previously learned aside from Taekwondo. Is that Tai Chi gonna friggin' rake the yard, Sam? Come on! However, he wasn't cleaning, which made me cross my arms and glare at him. Yeah, Sam. Aren't we supposed to be cleaning the front yard? You were taking too long. I already finished cleaning. Oh. What? I looked around the front and noticed the windows were polished, the weeds were pulled and tossed out from the sidewalk, the lamps were wiped down, and the stairs were swept. He really did finish cleaning. We literally disbanded a mere minute ago, though. He's kind of creepy. Wow, you work fast. I just noticed he has a bangle on his arm. Was that always there? <laughs> I don't know. Sam didn't respond. He kept his eyes closed and continued to do his Tai Chi. For a guy who wanted to be a badass, I would have imagined him doing hard workouts or karate moves for practice. Tai Chi was not what I expected out of him. I stood there wondering what to do. Don't give me a choice. Darn it! I can't do- I can't handle this! I can't handle the stress! I'm- uh, I don't- I, I'm gonna bug him. Well, I didn't see that. I couldn't tell if it was good or not. I remained quiet as I stood behind- beside him and began to move along with his movements. He was going slow, so it was easy to follow along. What are you doing? Playing. What does it look like I'm doing? <laughs> this isn't supposed to be fun, okay? It's actually supposed to be difficult. I'm not grinning like an idiot or anything. I know. Sam opened an eye to look at me without breaking his motions before closing it and continuing. I followed along flawlessly, keeping to his speed. It was very relaxing. Until I managed to trip over my feet and land on Sam. Oof! Hey! Watch it! Sorry! I had landed on top of Sam, staring eye to eye with him. Sam and I couldn't stop blushing, nor did either of us move from the ground. I could hear my heart pound against his chest. Sam didn't move a muscle, but just stared up at me in embarrassment. I eventually moved up off him and brushed myself off with a large blush on my face. Sam sat up and rubbed his head. Man. 
Watch where you're going next time. I nodded. He stood up and looked at me for a moment. I could see in his eyes that he was concerned if I was okay, but he refused to ask. I smiled before walking back into the house. I heard him sigh before I walked out of earshot. Don't leave! The hour of the house party had arrived. In my mind, I kept double and triple checking the essentials for the party. Knowing my dad, he invited his business partners and the executive of the Anderson Company to show me off. I stood in front of my mirror in my room, staring at my form as a million thoughts ran through my mind. It was just a housewarming party, but at the same time it wasn't. It was my chance to show my dad that I was better than his expectations. It was a chance for me to see my parents as a woman. It was my test to see if I was really ready to live on my own. Well, not truly alone. I had the incubi to think, but even so, I didn't have my dad guiding me or my mom helping me through living alone. A knock on my door broke my thoughts, surprising me. Is it Damien? Who is it? Hey, are you okay in there? Your parents should be here soon, so you should hurry getting ready. Well, I'm ready, but... But what? I'm sure you look fine, Anderson. Just come on out. Alright. As soon as I opened the door to the hall... That's a cool dress. I watched as Naomi and Suzu's faces turned from smiles to complete awestruck stares. What? Dude, you look hot. Yeah, you look amazing. Where did you get that dress? I've had it for a while. I just never had the chance to wear it. I figured I might as well bring it out now. It's a nice color. Whoa, Butler Cafe! Oh! <laughs> I stepped out. Where did they get these? I stepped out of my room and closed my bedroom door behind me. As I walked down the hall to the grand lobby, Incubi stood waiting for me at the bottom. All dressed to the nines as proper servants. Whoa! They really know how to dress well, don't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was slightly taken aback on how great the boys looked in uniform. Each had the poise of a perfect gentleman, even Sam, kind of, sort of. I slowly began to climb down the steps with Suzu and Naomi behind me. The boys watched as I descended the staircase one step at a time, like knights waiting for their princess. I felt my face slightly flush but I quickly shook my head to try and regain my thoughts. As I reached the last step, James offered his hand out to me and walked me down that final step, smiling. As beautiful as a princess, miss. Thank you. So, are you prepared for tonight? Um... Uh... Um... As ready as I'll ever be. I couldn't deny that I was nervous, but I had to try. This party was more than what it seemed, and I had done all I could prepare for it. Now it was all up to fate. The other boys smiled assuringly at me, which made me feel a little better about everything. I looked at my phone and marked the time. Almost right on cue, the doorbell rang. I gulped. I could practically feel my dad's aura from behind the door. Sam and Eric quickly rushed to the door and opened the double doors wide to reveal my parents, both dressed in their best. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. Oh, my. I didn't know your bequeathment came with servants. Yep. It was probably overlooked. Besides, who would deny good service? I was completely shocked. My parents didn't question the boys? They didn't ask for verification or anything? That is kind of weird. I looked to the boys and noticed Sam and Eric staring intently at my parents. Were they using their powers on them? They had to be. There was no way they'd be okay with this otherwise. I guess the servants counted as belongings to the house. My mother quickly rushed to me and gave me a large hug. I hugged her back, inhaling her perfume. It had only been a couple days, but living away from the ones who raised me was hard. My mother soon let me go and looked at my outfit. Oh, gorgeous. You look so lovely. David, look at your daughter and tell her I'm right. I looked to my dad, who was looking around the lobby like an inspector. I stood my ground, waiting for him to look at me. When he did, he let a small smile grace his lips. Your mother's right. You look like you're all grown up. The world around me stopped as my heart pounded hard in my chest. Did my dad just... compliment me? On his own accord? My mother was grinning ear to ear at his words. I was beyond speechless. Thank you, daddy. 
However, his cold face quickly returned as he began to look around once again. I assume that you're ready, then, to impress the rest of the guests, correct? What do you mean? The entire board from Anderson Toys is coming tonight. Even the vice chairman's son will be coming. All of them will be measuring your potential. My potential? To become CEO of the company. I knew it. Something was off about tonight. Now this party had become more than I'd, much more than I'd atten- anticipated. I gulped silently, but I nodded in response. I looked to the incubi, but they were continuing to be servants for my father's approval. I looked behind me and saw Naomi and Suzu raise their thumbs at me for encouragement. I let out a small breath before feeling my body accept the situation. I felt a weight in my gut, but I had to hide it. As if time zoomed forward, all of a sudden, the main hall of the lobby was full of guests. Men and women in formal or business attire showed up to meet me and see my new home. I didn't expect many to come, but I was once again surprised that night. I shook hands with many officials and executive members, putting on the professional face my dad trained me to have. I felt overwhelmed, but I hid it well behind a small smile and a handshake. Many even asked me questions. I tried my best to reply as as maturely as possible. I had to remember, say what they want to hear, not what you want to say. So, how do you feel living on your own at such a young age? Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, dear. I'm so sorry about your grandfather passing away. What? It really hit all of us hard. I didn't click anything. Thank you for your condolences. Do you have college plans? College. I got this. Yes, I do. It felt like the questions came up one after another. It was tough to answer some of them because they weren't about me, they were about the company. What do you think will happen with the company now that your grandfather has passed? It will get back on track soon. What do you think of the philanthropic policy the company has? What? Do you think the company should expand from just toys? Are they just gonna affect me later? Eventually the question stopped and I was back to being myself. Naomi and Suzu were mingling in the crowds and the incubi were doing their jobs. So I was all alone in a room full of strangers. It was unnerving to think about, but at least I wasn't being questioned left and right anymore. That was terrifying! (laughs) Suddenly, though, my mom pushed her way through the crowd to me, bringing along someone I didn't know. Honey, I'd like to introduce you to someone. Uh-oh. This kind gentleman is the son of the vice chairman. Ugh. With my mother stood a man who looked only a couple years older than me. He smiled and held his hand out to me, silently asking for my hand. Hi, I'm Andrew Lewis. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Anderson. I'm gonna nod. I don't like this guy. Andrew was slightly taken aback, but gently smiled and lowered his hand with a nod in return. My mother smiled at both of us, which made me slightly concerned. Why was she excited to introduce me and Andrew? I think you know. So, um, you organized this party very well, Miss Anderson. Thank you. You're welcome. Praise is very much deserved. Andrew then chuckled nervously, bringing a soft fist to his lips to cover his laugh properly before smiling at me. I'm sorry if I seem a little forward. (laughs) I've just been excited to meet Harold Anderson's granddaughter. Huh? Why? He used to talk about you all the time in the office on how you helped him refine his toys. I only attended meetings and heard all of the stories. You've helped a lot with the success of the company without having to actually work there. (laughs) Oh wow, I didn't know you talked about me. That would explain everyone's fascination with me and their rather personal questions. I looked to Andrew, who had a kind face... What? Who had a kind face to me. Something about him seemed off and I didn't know what it was. He seemed to be hiding something. Whether it was good or bad, I was not able to find out. I felt someone walk up beside me, causing me to turn to them. Next to me was my dad, giving his cold stare to Andrew, who suddenly became tense. So, you're Jared's son. Andrew's body twitched slightly. Whether it was fear or insult, Andrew locked eyes with my father. I couldn't help but feel the tension between them. It irked me to see how fragile the air had become, enough to break it the wrong word. You're the one who wants to be the next CEO of the Anderson Company. I see. Well... I stared at Andrew. 
This guy wanted to take my grandfather's place as CEO? I thought the vice chairman wanted the position. David, leave the poor boy alone. I'm merely testing the boy's conversational skills. Nothing wrong with that. Of course not, sir. And polite as well. Interesting. If you'll excuse me. Quickly, Andrew retreated away from my family into the crowd of people. No, I'm not going to follow him. I don't like him. I watched as he disappeared into the crowd towards the back of the house. I was worried, but I gave him his space. He obviously needed it. Pah. <laughs> He's not CEO material. That's because you practically interrogated the young man. A little questioning shouldn't have bothered him. He's obviously not ready for any title in our company. I bit my tongue. I didn't want to make a scene with my dad. One wrong word and he'd lecture me in front of everyone. That was not something that I wanted in my housewarming party. I let out a sigh before looking at the clock. It was getting close to midnight, meaning that the party was going to end soon. I lowered my gaze out the window and saw a limo pull up. And that, once again, is where I'm going to end this episode. So, I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to save right there. I'm double saving because I'm paranoid. I am getting more and more excited as this goes on. So, I hope you were excited for the, as excited for the next episode as I am. And I hope you have a good one. Bye for now.